Want to become a data analyst? Start here. That's what one Reddit user said three months ago on the subreddit data analysis, and it ended up getting 737 upvotes, which is the most upvoted post in the subreddit's history. So today I'm going to be diving in, look at what the subreddit said, what their advice was, and if I agree or disagree with it. Welcome to the Data Career Podcast, the podcast that helps aspiring data professionals land their next data job. Here's your host, Avery Smith. If you're new here, my name is Avery Smith. I'm the host of the Data Career Podcast, and I spend all of my time trying to help people land their first data job. So let's go ahead and hop into the post. Here's how this will work. I'm going to read off what the subreddit user said. I'll give my advice, yes or no, and then I'll read the answer that the subreddit said, and we'll see if that confirms or disagrees with what I say. So here's the first question. Number one, do you need a degree to land a data analytics job? And I talk about this all the time on the podcast. In fact, two episodes ago, we had Tashawn Black on the show, who was evidence of not having any sort of college degree and landing a data job. So is it possible to land a data job without a degree? Absolutely, yes. Is it easier with a degree? Absolutely, yes. It can be both. I've had students who have no college degree land awesome jobs, even maybe better paying and more flexible jobs than those that have college degrees. But throughout the process, a degree is rarely going to hurt you. It's usually going to be helpful. The subreddit user says, answer, it's helpful. Many job postings for data analysis ask for a bachelor's degree. And I agree with that. All right, question number two, will the Google data analytics certificate from Coursera be enough to get me a data analytics job? My answer to this, is the Google cert enough? Ah, yes and no. The Google cert has a lot of good information in it. In fact, a little bit too much good information in it. It's way too long. It covers way too much content. So I'm not a huge fan of the degree. And also, in my opinion, in order to land your first data job, you have to follow the SPN method. The SPN method stands for skills. You have to learn the right skills. P is for the projects and portfolio. You have to build projects, put them on a portfolio so that it is the evidence that you can do what your resume says that you can do. And then lastly, the end, you have to grow your network and use your network to land that job. The Google Data Analytics Certificate is only focused on the skills. And in my opinion, it's not even focused necessarily on the right skills. It'll focus on Google Sheets a lot, which is very similar to Excel, but Excel's way more prevalent in industry. It's gonna then focus on Tableau, which I think is really good to learn, SQL, which is really good to learn. And then it teaches you R. And I just don't believe as a data analyst, you'll need to use R that often. It's not really listed that often on job descriptions. Instead, I would focus more on Excel, Tableau and SQL, leave out the R for now. You can always come back and learn it later. And also I'm actually just a bigger fan of Python than I am of R, but I'm not gonna get into the debate right now. They say, no, not even close. This degree will not help you land a job. The course teaches you some of the basic technical concepts of the industry, and that's about it. My feeling on this course is if you took the entire thing from start to finish and it didn't scare you away, you may have a chance at this. It's marketed really well as a potential game changer, but this cert is asked about 10 times more than any other. But again, it's not a magical key to the industry. It lets you peek into the door and see where you're getting yourself into. And I agree with this. I think you can get a job from the cert. We see lots of you know stories and experiences of this happening. But for every person that lands a job, there's probably, I don't know, a thousand that do not land a job through the certification. And calling it a certification, I understand why it's called a certification, but it carries very little to no weight inside of the industry at the time being. So is it good? Sure. Is it enough to help you land your first data job? Maybe not. Question number three, I already have a degree in X. Will that help me? And my answer is yes. No matter what you've already used in the past, data analytics can be applied to your industry. So if you're in sales, you can be a data analyst that looks at sales data. If you're in marketing, you can be a marketing analyst. If you're a professional athlete, you can use data analytics in sports analytics. No matter what you're doing in the past, it can somehow be related to data analytics. And that's because data analytics is actually really industry agnostic, meaning no matter what industry you're in, data analysis can be used, can be applied to help that business perform better. So I think whatever your previous background is, it will be useful in your data analyst position. The subreddit user says, depending on the position, the recruiter and the company, most job postings show that they are looking for a degree in a related field, for instance, business or statistics, etc. The more relevant, the better your chances are that it will help. Remember, degree is just one part of the entire package that you should use to help yourself transition into the field. So I think we're kind of on the same page here. Your degree does matter. I'm a little bit more of an optimist thinking that your degree in the past will help you in the future. I studied chemical engineering and both of my first data jobs were within the you know chemical engineering world and my background really set me apart in those different worlds. In fact, there was actually something called A-game at Exxon 
a game was just like a company wide analytics tournament. It's like a hackathon where they would give us a data set and send us to town. Just like you do whatever you want, help us solve business problems with this data set. It's not dissimilar to what I'm trying to do in the data project club. If you guys haven't heard about that, check the link in the description down below to learn more. But basically I would compete in these and I would compete pretty well. I'd end up being the finals. I even won one of them against people that had PhDs in computer science. Like these people were just smarter than me. They had more school. They were better data scientists, better data analysts than I was. But one thing that they lacked was they didn't understand the industry. They didn't understand the domain. And so that's a lot of the times I was able to compete with them is because we get a data set and they'll be like, Hey, is high sulfur good? Or is that bad? And any chemical engineer knows you never really want sulfur for the majority of the time. So having that background knowledge can actually be one of your superpowers and help you land a job over someone who's maybe more talented or smarter than you. So your domain does matter. All right, question number four, what do I need to learn? I already talked about this SPN method, the right skills are Excel, Tableau, SQL in that order. Unless you're trying to land a job that's over $120,000, then you're probably going to need some sort of scripting or advanced programming language like R or Python or a cloud or something like that. The user says Excel, SQL, Python, and Power BI or Tableau is a great place to start. I would pull Python out of that, even though it is my favorite data tool. Python's hard to learn. It's gonna take you a long time to learn all of Python. And so I would focus on SQL, Excel, and then I would focus on Tableau. Tableau and Power BI, if you know one, you can figure out the other. I actually think Power BI is a little bit more intuitive to use, to be honest, but it's a lot harder to access. It's only really available on Windows computers. So if you have a Mac, it's gonna be a pain in the butt to even get it going. And then also it really wants you to have a business email, not a Gmail or like a Hotmail or Yahoo. And that just makes things a little bit more complicated. So, and Tableau is actually asked for more often than Power BI. So I'd start with Tableau. I would ignore Power BI for the time being. I ignore Python right now. They also say I would learn them in that order. Ah, don't learn Python before learning Tableau or Power BI. Please don't do that. If you try to learn Python before Power BI or Tableau, it's going to take you a lot longer than you want to land your first data job. And it's just going to be more work than necessary. You guys can learn Power BI or Tableau in one to two weeks if you really are at it. Like, honestly, those things are not hard. They work very similar to like, it's just all drag and drop. Like there's not very much coding in either one. And so you can learn those a lot faster than you can learn Python. And then they say from those, you can start branching them out and learn SSRS, SQL Server Reporting Service. That's basically just SQL. Azure, SAS, Looker, Alteryx. To be perfectly honest, I've hardly used any of those in my data journey. And if I haven't used them in, you know, like the seven plus years of experience I have, you'll probably be okay not learning them before landing your first data job. Once I've learned Excel, SQL, Tableau, I would just focus on building projects on those versus learning something new because really learning those extra skills probably isn't going to be a huge differentiator unless there's a specific industry or a specific company or a specific job you really want to ask for one of those. I'd recommend holding off for right now. All right. Question number five, do certifications matter? My answer is not really. There's not that really many certifications inside of data analysis. There is the Google data cert, which is new and it'll be become bigger as time goes on, but it's not really even, doesn't really carry that much weight right now. There are some, you know, certifications that do carry weight, like for instance, the Power BI one, some other Microsoft ones as well. But really, there's not very many entry-level jobs that are gonna ask for those, so it's kind of overkill. So instead of focusing on getting certified to show how good you are, I'd focus more on doing projects to show how good you are. Let's see what the Reddit user says. They say, do certifications matter? Depending on the person who is hiring. To some recruiters, it means you have at least the minimum basic knowledge set on a topic. To others, they may seem as useless throwaways that anyone spending 30 minutes on the internet could get. I mean, I don't think anyone sees that like they're throwaways per se. I think people realize it takes time to get them. But once again, they're not carrying that much weight. They're not really helping you that much. Question number six, can I get a job right away? My answer is, I mean, define right away. Like, can you get a job tomorrow? Probably not, but it really depends on your background and how hard you are willing to work. Inside of my program, the Data Analytics Accelerator, it's a 10 week program. So that's supposed to be within 70 days of landing your first job. I would say we've had some students do it in about 55 ish. That's probably the minimum if you're starting from absolutely scratch. You know, and I've seen it takes some people a year to get land that first data job. There's really some factors. Once again, it comes down to how well you can follow the SBN method. So if you're going to try to learn Python first, it's going to take you 365 days to learn Python. So it really just depends on your journey. So can you get a job right away? I would say two months is probably the minimum if you're starting from scratch, but it's definitely possible to do that in four or five months. Let's see the subreddit user's answer. 
It depends on your experience level. If you're trying to break in from another career, it's going to be difficult. And like any job hunt, you will probably be passed up for those that are experienced already. It's going to come down to your knowledge in the field and how well you market yourself. I do love that this person said it's not only your knowledge in the field, that's your skills, the S part of the SBN method, but it's how well you market yourself. And that's the P and the N of the SBN method because it is a combination. You know, I've had some students who are less skilled land jobs than students who are better skilled just because they're better at marketing themselves. And I hate to say that. I wish it was just the most talented person that got, deserved the job, got it every single time, but it's just not the case. You have to be marketing yourself. And that's why building the projects and building your network is so important. All right, I lost tracks of the questions, but here's another one. Is having a degree in X enough to get me a data role? I don't really know if I understand this question. Like we talked about, do you need a degree or not? Having a degree in a, you know, an unrelated field, is that enough? And like I said, if you're willing, if you're able to show your skills on a portfolio that you can actually do what your resume says you can do, you can actually do Excel, you can actually do SQL, you can actually do Tableau, then you're going to be fine. You're going to land a job, you know? Let's see what this user says. Probably not. Again, depends on the company and the hiring manager. You're going to improve your chances by adding a great resume and experience to your degree. So I'm not really sure about that one. It's kind of a throwaway. But if you do not have a math degree or an engineering degree or a statistics degree or a computer science degree, you can still land a data job. 100%. I see it happen literally every week inside of the Data Analytics Accelerator program. We had a music therapist. Well, I've never even heard of that degree before. She just landed a data job. We've had chemists land data jobs. We've had English majors land data jobs. It really doesn't play a huge role what you studied in the past. Then this user gives a roadmap to breaking into data analytics, and it's kind of lengthy here. I'll just go ahead and read the top bullet. Build a strong foundation in data analysis and visualization. I think that's true as well. And they say this includes SQL, Excel, and data visualization tools like Power BI and Tableau. Okay, so they left out Python of this one. So I agree with that. Yeah, definitely Excel, SQL, and I would do Tableau over Power BI. Number two, get hands-on experience. The best way to get experience is to work on data analysis projects. You can do this through internships, volunteer work, or personal projects. I'm going to be honest, doing it through internships or volunteer work, I haven't seen work very well. So it's probably going to be more on that personal projects. Uh, this will help you build a portfolio of work that you can showcase to a potential employer. If you can find out how to become more involved with this type of work in your current career, do it. Okay. Number three, network with the people in the fields. Definitely agree with this one. Attend data analytics meetups, conferences, and other events to meet people in the field and learn about the latest trends and technologies. LinkedIn and meetup are excellent places to start. Have a strong LinkedIn page and build a network of people. I agree with all of this. I think that's easier said than done, but I don't have any qualms about that one. Number four, education. Consider pursuing a degree or certification in data analytics or related fields such as statistics or computer science. I strongly disagree with this one. I mean, it's going to take you tens of thousands of dollars and years to do one of those things, right? Like people don't have the time and people don't want to spend that much money. I would much rather invite you to come to Data Analytics Accelerator. It's going to take you a fraction of the time and a fraction of the cost. And honestly, I think your odds of landing a job are about the same. So I disagree with this one considerably. Number five, learn machine learning. Don't learn machine learning if you're trying to become a data analyst. Once again, if you're trying to land that first data job, and unless you want something that pays more than $120,000 a year in the US, then machine learning is just going to be a waste of time. It's going to be overkill. It's not even really in demand for data analysts. Like, and if, and if it is, you could learn linear regression, multivariate linear regression, and that's a form of machine learning. And that's pretty pretty simple and would get you really far you know, in the field actually. But I really would not, if you're really struggling to land that first data job, learning machine learning, putting that in your repertoire is probably not the difference maker, to be honest. Is it cool? Yes, but that's probably not why you're landing a data job. Yeah, so I don't really think that's a data analyst role. And that's really one of the things that separates a data analyst from a data scientist. So disagree with that one. Ah, number six, build a portfolio. Obviously, I agree with this one. Creating portfolio of your work is a great way to showcase your skills and experience to potential employers. Your portfolio should include examples of data analysis projects you've worked on, as well as relevant certifications or awards you've earned. That would be SQL, Excel, Python, and visualization tool. Lots of YouTube videos out there to help you get started. For instance, I have over 30 on my YouTube channel, Avery Smith on YouTube. Go check those out. The user didn't say that. In fact, they have like this like YouTube suggestions at the bottom of the page and they didn't even mention me. Sad. But go check that out and get started. Create a resume. Tailor your resume to highlight your skills. I kind of think that's a no brainer. Be sure to use numbers to quantify your accomplishments. Numbers are good. I like that. How much time or cost was saved or what percentage of errors were identified and corrected. 
That's really good. Emphasize transferable skills such as problem solving, attention to detail and communication. I think that's really good as well. Let's see. Practice. The more you practice, the better you'll become. Practice every day. Don't forget the skills that you learn. I think that that's good without saying. Have the right attitude. Self-doubt. Questioning if you're doing the right thing, being unsure, and thinking about staying where you're at will not get you to your goal. Having a positive outlook that you will do this is the only way to get there. I agree this. A lot of this is mental mindset. And so that's why having a coach and a community around you to keep you going is so important. You definitely want that. And that's one of the things we, we offer in the data analytics accelerator. Applying. LinkedIn is the best place to start. Indeed, Monster and Dice are also good websites to try. Be prepared to not hear back from the majority of companies you apply to. Don't search for data analysts. You will limit your res results too much. I don't agree with that. You can definitely search data analysts. Definitely can. But you can search for the skills you have. For instance, SQL, Power BI. This will return many results. It just get, depends on the company, calls the position. Data scientist, data analyst, data visualization specialist, business intelligence manager could all have be the same thing. I mean, that's a stretch. I mean, definitely data analyst and data visualization specialist could be the same. But calling a business intelligence manager a data scientist the same, nah, that's a little bit of a stretch. But you know what? I'm not going to harp on this too much because there is so many different titles in the data world and they do carry low meaning. Like people don't have like a standard. So I get the point. I just don't think these examples were the best ones. And last one is practice. Oh, that was the same one as eight. It's going to take weeks or months at a minimum to get into data analytics. It's definitely going to take weeks. You're definitely not going to do this in like one to two weeks. It's going to take some time. So that was some of the suggestions that this Reddit user said. Then they said, be prepared for an application process like this. You're going to apply to a hundred jobs. That's a lot of jobs to apply to. My students probably don't get that high on the data job applications. You're going to get ghosted by 65% of them. Once again, that's a high number. I would probably say a little bit lower, but it's going to happen. Rejected 25. So that's 65 plus 25, 70, 80. So we have, what, 20% left. 10% initial contact and then get ghosted. 6% ghosted after initial contact. 3% second interview or technical quiz. Three, a low ball offer. One, maybe you found something decent after all. That's a little pessimistic in my view. And if you've done a good job with your network, you're definitely not going to have to go through this many job applications. You're not going to get ghosted as much. If you can get recruited or referred, this changes the game. And so that's why that N, the SBN method, the network is a third of the whole method of landing your data job. That's how important it is. You have to be using your network to land that data job because that's going to cut this time in half, cut this effort in half, which is really important. So I think if you're using your network and using your portfolio, then this is a little dramatic. If you're just using the spray and pay, pray method of, you know, you learn some skills on Coursera and you're just kind of randomly applying to as many jobs as you can, this might be more accurate for that, but it's not what I see in the data analytics accelerator as much. So there you go. That is my response to the want to become a data analyst start here thread on the subreddit data analysis. If you want to become a data analyst, I'm biased, but I think the Data Analytics Accelerator is the best place to start. This is my 10-week boot camp that you're supposed to do 10 to 15 hours a week. Or if you don't want to do it that fast, you can do it in 20 weeks and spend between five and eight hours a week. And it's going to help you land that first data job in 90 days. It is amazing. We have so many people inside this program. They're enjoying it. They're landing data jobs every single week. If you want to learn more about this program, click the link in the description down below, and I hope to see you there. I'd love to be your coach, and I'd love to have you be part of this program.